The Fantail is a little bit of an oddball for the Pantheon lineup. On the one side we got some of the most famous distance boards, and on the other sides we have some pretty awesome downhill boards. And then there's the Fantail. I actually love this board now, but it took me a little to really understand it. But you will understand my train of thought throughout the video. I promise. But let's get back to the topic at hand. Besides the dope graphic done by Eddie Kim, who does a lot of the Pantheon graphics, it doesn't really fit into the lineup. To get a feeling where this board sits, let's actually compare it to some other boards I own. Starting with the Pranayama. And the Pranayama is as much of a mini cruiser as can be. And as you can see, actually, the Pranayama is even a little shorter than this. But it's, of course, a little heavier. Let's see how the decks line up. The fantail is a little bigger here, but gets smaller on the waist. Compared to the supersonic, however, it is noticeably shorter. It's still a rather, well, let's say, a shorter board. The sticky, bigger real base on the outmost options, I think if you put it on the inner options, can be a little shorter or about as equal, and it's a tiny bit shorter shuriken and measured from nose to tail pretty similar the wheelbase is definitely shorter on the shuriken and the width you can see that the shuriken definitely is wider but the, uh, the tail is also wider it's all in all a wider board and of course, this one is tapered here, instead of in the middle. I hope this gives you a good overview on the dimensions of the board. Let's go back to the video. Let's go over the construction next. It's six plies of maple with two layers of fiberglass. So the board is plenty stiff and durable. The deck is tapered towards the rear and has a pretty comfortable kick tail. The wheelbase is 19.2 inches, which is pretty long, considering the even shorter wheelbase on the Pantheon Shuriken. It has a very little nose, that is barely noticeable. The board features a solid high quality construction like the other Pantheon decks and nothing really out of the ordinary. It has a nice concave that you notice, but I would still consider it comfortable to stand on. Something that I didn't yet have on a cruiser is a micro drop construction, where the deck is dropped a little lower at these two points. This helps you to orient yourself on the board and to keep you a little more locked in. It is definitely noticeable when riding, but on the other side it's mellow enough to not bother you, which did surprise me a little. I thought it would be a little more intrusive. Do you see this? This cat judging me. I know my slides are not where they should be, but good for you. Talking about being locked in, the grip tape is rougher than on their other distance boards, which actually feels pretty good. The roughness combined with the micro drops help to ensure that a lot of the force you generate while pushing gets transferred onto the deck, and the micro drops increase that feeling. It feels pretty efficient to push. Before we get into the trucks, let's talk about the wheels. It comes with 88 Wheelco Moonwalkers. I have nothing bad to say about them. And these are some 65mm wheels at a durometer of 78A that are pretty comfortable while also being pretty lively and rather easy to break out. Pretty much what you want on a board that can do more than just simple commuting. They are good and I don't see any need to go for different wheels. But let's proceed to the trucks, cause this is where it gets interesting. There are two setups that are recommended. A 130mm reverse kingpin setup, like Gen 6 Bears, that are also on the supersonic, or a 149mm traditional kingpin setup with a wedge D wedge front to back with trucks like the Pantheon Stylus trucks or Paris Street trucks. So if you already have one of those on your distance setups, you're in luck since you can just reuse those trucks and save some money. I actually have tested all of these and would add one option. Add some 150mm RKP trucks maybe something like Paris V3s in there. But let me explain what I like and dislike about the individual setups. Let's start with the RKP setup. At 130mm this thing is very maneuverable, which is very fun, but it took me a little to dial this thing in, bushing wise. It was a little too nimble and easy to steer since you have so much leverage over the trucks. I had to lock this down a little by using double barrel bushings 
and having them a little tighter. But once I was satisfied, this thing felt amazing. Even with double barrels, it feels very maneuverable and it was a lot of fun for some casual free ride. If you already have some 130mm bad trucks at home, this is a good setup, so just try it. Having 150mm RKPs feels a little more stable, but less maneuverable, but still plenty fun. I would choose them if you use this board for some very flowy carving and chill commuting. It just makes the board feel a little bigger than it is, which, depending on your preference, can be a good thing. For TKP setups we have the Stylus and the Paris trucks. And to be honest, I like the Paris trucks more. I love the stylus on the Pranayama because it feels like having the board on autopilot with lane assistance. With the taller bushing and the insert plug, it just pushes you back on track and gets you smooth into those curves. This is something I don't prefer in a board that I take for more playful rides. I just prefer the twitchy fast rebound feeling I get from the Paris TKPs with the shorter skateboard bushings. I used both TKPs, wedged in the front and de-wedged in the rear, to have the board a little more stable in the back and more turny in the front. If you only commute, the stylus trucks will be right up your alley and feel very controlled. But I prefer the twitchy experience on the Paris trucks. Still, both are good and it's definitely a preference thing. I would go with whatever you have lying around. Honorable mentions. I think some skateboard trucks like Indies could be pretty good as well to be extra low and light. Also, surf skate trucks like the Carver CX could also be plenty of fun. So if you have them, why not give those setups a try? But after all, what's my summary? It took a while, but by now I really enjoy that board. The standing platform with its shape is more than wide enough at the right parts and comfortable for me to stand on. The tapered waist kinda feels like a comfortable pocket that gives me some very nice lever over the rails for some slidier stuff, especially when it gets wider at the tail. Also, adding my self-designed footstop on the front really locks me in on the board. The tail is very comfortable and I really enjoy to learn on it. I made some great progress as a rider on this board and continue to learn on it every day I use it. I would say it helped me grow a lot as a skater in general. But is it right for you? If you are aware that this is not a board for those long distances, nor a pure trick deck, but a lively cruiser for shorter distances with good free ride ability and a decently functional shape, I think it's perfect for you. It is still pretty easy to carry despite its longer wheelbase and tons of fun to ride. But there are also a couple of things I would like to mention. This is just personal, but I don't use the nose at all. So for my preference, it could have been cut off and just made a stubby board. But that's me. If you like it and have the skill to use it, good for you. Second, wheelbase options. There is space for one or two more. I might somewhere and add them with my wheelbase tool. I think it's always just fun to have more of them coming in stock. Third, not specific to Pantheon, but to all skate shops. Offer to have the hardware holes sunk in at a little extra cost, it would be a nice to have. And fourth, I think having razor tail looks bad on such a beautiful board. And scratching into the fiberglass eventually is not good either. So having a skid plate that is available would be nice. I have designed a replaceable one, but my design was so off I had to hand file it a lot to make it work and I'm not going to share that. So having a 3D printable file or the option to purchase one with it would be great. But all in all, I love that board and can only recommend it. But what do you think? Write me your opinions in the comments and if you like this video, check out my channel and subscribe. See you in the next one. Bye!